Hey everyone! What database would be the best fit for your project? In this video, we'll give you a clear understanding of what Cassandra and MongoDB are and what they are not. On this channel, we share our experience and insights in the world of tech. Subscribe now not to miss our future videos. We'll start with refreshing some basics. SQL versus no SQL. The borderline. So, the SQL category includes relational databases manipulating data with structured query language. No SQL databases resolve existing scaling and accessibility issues, characteristic of traditional relational databases. Want to know about the differences between relational and non-relational databases? Find the link to the article in the description box. SQL and NoSQL databases are in no way better than one another. All individual databases differ a lot, even inside each category. Pause the video and look at our cheat sheet to draw a general borderline between SQL and NoSQL. So what about our view on Cassandra versus MongoDB? They are both enormously scalable, high-performance databases belonging to the NoSQL family. Yet, these two are radically different. Cassandra database is designed to manipulate huge data arrays across multiple nodes. In contrast to the relational database organizing data records in rows, Cassandra's data model is based on columns to provide faster data retrieval. MongoDB database stores data in the form of JSON-like documents, instead of table records used in relational databases. It allows faster data integration. It is interesting to draw a parallel between MongoDB document-oriented data model and that of traditional table-oriented SQL database. Both Cassandra and MongoDB enjoy popularity among thousands of well-known and highly reputed organizations like Reddit, Facebook, Netflix for Cassandra, and Forbes, Google, Cisco for MongoDB. So let us list their similarities we notice. They both belong to the NoSQL family. They are not ACID compliant. They are open source. They are both cross-platform solutions and support a variety of Windows and Linux. The best thing is that they support Mac OS platforms. Don't you agree? Drop your comment right now. Okay, let's move on to their key differences. Data model. Cassandra, the data model is structured similar to tables with rows and columns. In MongoDB, the data model is unstructured. Clustering. Cassandra. There's no configuration server. MongoDB, Mongo Master, Mongo Shard, and Mongo Config servers participate in data replication under the management of Mongo Daemon Server. High availability strategy. Cassandra, multiple master nodes in a cluster provide 100% availability, even if the leading node goes down. MongoDB has a master slave model. It takes 10 to 50 seconds from a slave node to take the master's role. Write speed. Cassandra. Multiple master nodes accept writes in parallel, each so you can increase the write capacity. MongoDB. The write capacity is limited, since data writes go to a single master node. Query language. Cassandra query language with syntax is very similar to SQL. MongoDB. A query interface based on JSON formatting. Which database is right for your business? We have done a lot of experimenting with these two databases, and every time we came to the same conclusion. They both are great players if used in the right field. To make your decision easier, we've collected the most significant points. 1. Data model. If you require a rich data model, MongoDB will be a better choice. 2. Index querying. If most of the querying in your application occurs by the primary key, Cassandra is a good choice. If secondary indexes and flexible querying by them is a primary requirement for you, then choose MongoDB. 3. Availability. If you need 100% uptime guaranteed, Cassandra is better due to its multiple master node model. 4. Write speed. If you need to write huge amounts of data, then choose Cassandra. 5. Language support. Cassandra is a better fit if your team already has SQL skills. 6. Data aggregation. MongoDB has a built-in data aggregation framework. 7. Workload. Cassandra prevails in handling write-heavy workloads. In the case of read-heavy loads, the performance of Cassandra and MongoDB are a close match. And that's it! 
We hope that you now have a better understanding of the differences between Cassandra and MongoDB. This video was prepared by the Jelvix team. We provide software development, UI UX design, and IT consulting services. If you have any questions, contact our team. We promise new videos with the latest technology news and inspiring solutions. So subscribe not to miss them. Hit the bell button, like this video, and stay tuned.